have something pretty darn cool. This is a Caterpillar 336 EL Excavator. This was made by CCM and it's in 124 scale. This thing is gargantuan. I love it. I love the big scale model uh, die cast and this thing is just great. Uh, it, it really is. It's enormous. Now 124 scale isn't the biggest, but it's pretty darn big. And this thing weighs a metric ton. Now, CCM, in my opinion, I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. It's very well done. There's details out the gazoo. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But for what it is, I think it is absolutely fantastic. The, the details are just outstanding. It's very well done. There's a lot of really good functionality to it. And I, I've just been very, very happy with it. Uh, this is one of the few models that, as soon as it got announced, I pre-ordered it. And I, I've been very happy with it. Now, today, it can you find them? Yes. Are they expensive? Yes. Is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's really hard to answer that question, just for the fact that is any of this die cast really worth the price you pay? No, not really. The sentimental value to me is is pretty high, and that makes it worth it to me. Uh, would I pay eight or nine hundred dollars for this on the secondhand market? No, I don't think so. I, it's too much money for that. But for what it cost when they came out, they, it was certainly worth it. I thought, and like I said, I, I've been very happy with it. So I'm gonna try to get into this. Uh, without knocking the camera over because, like I said, this thing is big and it weighs a metric ton, so bear with me. All right, so when these finally came out about 2014, this was actually towards the end of the 336E product life or production life, I guess. Uh, around 2015-2016, they went to the 336Fs. So uh, CCM come out kind of late with these, but it's still pretty cool. They did a great job with them, and they, they offered it in two versions. Uh, this version here came with a quick coupler, came with a tooth bucket, and a uh, ditch cleaning bucket here, which is pretty neat. The buckets are really well done, by the way. Anyway, the other version came with a progressive thumb. Now, I'm fairly certain that they use the same stick on both, both versions, but the thumb version, you have a set of remote lines that come down to a block here that go out to the cylinder for the progressive thumb. And it's pretty cool, but... Me, personally, I don't like excavators with thumbs on them. I'm sure... Uh, now, let me backtrack. I've never run a hoe that had a progressive thumb. I, The only one I ever ran with a thumb had a fixed thumb, and that thing was just garbage. It was absolute trash. It was a waste of time, waste of weight on the stick. And uh, for what that company was, was doing with it, it was just it was garbage, absolute garbage. Now, I'm sure a progressive thumb is very nice, and there's a time and a place to use it, but for what they were doing with it, it was garbage. Now, so this coupler, there is uh, instructions from CCM on how to use the, the coupler itself. And I'm sure it makes sense, but I can't get it to do what the instructions say to do. And uh, I, I don't know, there's just mystery to it, I guess. So, it is very well done. It's modeled very well. It's cool that you have the hydraulic lines come down here. You got your two flex lines here that go to the cylinder that's inside of the coupler itself. Now, the cylinder is basically spring-loaded, so the jaws on the bottom, you got to flip those up to get the bucket in. And you also have your safety latch up here, which, again, uh, is functional the way it's supposed to be, which is really cool. That, that CCM would do it that way. They could have done this any number of ways and they made it work like it does on the machine, which is awesome. It's not awesome trying to get the bucket on and off there because it's a nightmare, but it's cool that they made it work the way it's supposed to. Now, this red latch right here, the whole point of this, uh, when you take the bucket on and off, you have a little buzzer inside the cab that goes off that says, like, oh, your, your coupler is unlatched. Uh, you better pay attention to that. Uh, the, the real, uh, I guess the, the strength of the coupler goes in the bottom pin here, that, where that cylinder comes around and grabs onto this. This is just kind of notched out. So you pick it up with the coupler, but it really locks in on the bottom pin. 
So the, the point of this red uh, little latch up here is a visual aid that when the, the bottom pin latch is stroked out all the way, like it is fully extended out and it is grabbed onto this pin and the, the bucket is locked in place, this will get forced out over top of this top pin at basically like the last, I don't remember what it is, like inch of stroke or whatever. So when this latch comes over, it's it's a, it's a visual aid that says, yes, the bucket is latched. Now, can it still be wrong? Yes. There, there are certain circumstances where you can get it wrong. But the idea is that it's a visual safety aid. It's just another tool for the operator or to help the operator say that you know yes the bucket's latched now most guys uh myself included i i don't not that i don't trust that not that i don't trust the buzzer in the cab you know that, that says it's unlatched i just i don't trust the machine the electronics you know the the, the whatever so whenever i put the bucket on and off i would you know slam it on the ground pick up the machine with it whatever you know fl you know flip it backwards to make sure that it had a good positive lock uh it historically it, and it's happened to a lot of people um you can't rely on the coupler itself because sometimes uh the alarm might go off and it's not stroked out all the way whatever uh good example of this after i had left uh the excavating company to go do the uh work for the company running the d10s uh my pipe layer that i had he was in the ditch the guy running the hoe didn't check to see if the bucket was latched. So he picked up his skinny bucket, went over to the stain box, got a bucket load of stain, and swung back into the ditch. And as he was dumping his stain into the ditch, he dropped his bucket. And the pipe layer wasn't right there, but he was close enough that it luckily it didn't kill him, but it did break his leg. And that was 100% the operator's fault. He did not check to see if the bucket was latched. Uh, that's not a mechanical failure. That's not anything other than the operator not checking to see if it was it was correct. Uh, yeah, you can blame it on the machine, whatever. To me, that's operator, 100%. It is nothing but the operator's fault. Now, that being said, uh, back to the machine. It is really cool. It's really well done. I love that CCM made it uh, true to life. All right, so after almost having to throw this thing into the river, basically here, a little closer. There you can kind of see that, that cylinder that's in the side there. You can see that bottom latch, how it grabs onto that bottom pin and it's spring-loaded. And then this top, um, like you, you hook into something. Uh, I'll try this. So you hook in your bucket, you pick it up, that'll come down, and then that'll push out over like the last little bit of stroke. That That's how it's meant to work. Uh, I still have no idea how exactly you're supposed to get that to unlatch once you have the bucket on there, because it's really tough. I just stick a screwdriver in there and hope and pray for <laughs> success, basically. If you know how it's supposed to work, please let me know. I'm sure there's a lot of other people in the same boat. All right, on to the cab. The cab looks really good. The interior just looks fantastic. The glass and the mirrors and the lights and everything just look great. Uh, the hydraulic lines and everything are just just about fabulous on this machine. Now, the cab door does open up, and they have all these little sticky tape dots everywhere. The cab door doesn't swing all the way around like it does on the real machine, but it's still pretty darn good, uh, at least in my book. Now, the cab interior is very well done. I think it's just about perfect. It's cool that you have the the screen lit up like it's working, like the machine is running. I think that's really pretty darn cool. Um, it just looks great. I think it really looks fantastic. It really does. Now, over here, this first little panel opens up, and you have like a lot of your electronic stuff in here. You got uh, the batteries and everything. You got your air filter. Um, it's kind of like odds and ends and whatnot. And then the next panel, like this is where you would have your master switch, and you have all your radiator fins and a couple other odds and ends. And that looks fantastic. I love the mesh that they have on these, these uh, side panels. They're just uh, 
very well done. I love the finer details. They they get me every time. Uh, like the tie down uh, decals or stickers or whatever on the tracks. The undercarriage is really well done too. Like you can see the bolt heads. Uh, you can see the bolt heads in the tracks. Uh, I just I love that. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Every every uh, every time you have those little details, it just uh, tickles me to death. There you got your little camera. Which is nice. So here on this side, you have the door for your hydraulic pumps, and this one's kind of hard to, kind of hard to get open. I gotta use the old uh, sort of exact zero to get this thing opened up. Here we go. And there you got your pump and your filters and then your hydraulic lines, and uh, you got your main. <laughs> Your main hydraulic line there, God help you if that breaks, it makes an absolute mess. And the hood does open up on top here too. And you get a good look at the, the motor. Here you have your fuel fuel tank. The hydraulic tank is somewhere, I don't know if that's right behind there or not. Your little toolbox here, and steps and the handrails, all that's really well done. Alright, so here you can get a good look at the the cat, uh, I think it's a, it's a C9 motor the emissions and the radiator overflow and all that other fun stuff but it's really well done the detailing is is very good in here uh i love it i love the mesh on the the hood here all that stuff just tickles me to death now the c9 motors they weren't great they weren't terrible uh 2011 this was like the generation where caterpillar started to get the emissions figured out uh basically between like 2008 and 2012 all the cat emissions, the, the motors and everything, it was just garbage. Just absolute garbage. Um, and, and it's, cat, cat wasn't the only people that had problems with the, the emissions, but it was just bad. Um, 2011, it got better. Still not great. So there you can see the your main swing motor and all your hydraulic lines going up the back of the boom. Here you can see your decorational rear window for the cab and you got your little warning labels there it just kills me that they even have this back window like what are you going to do look out the back window and see the hood like just leave that just fill it in cut out one more place for sunlight to get into the black cab and uh you know it just it always seemed kind of ridiculous to me anyway all the the hydraulic detail and everything is just looks great uh, the mix of the hard lines and the and the, the, the rubber lines uh, is very well done. Uh, it's something that CCM does probably better than anybody else. All right, so didn't really talk about this ditch cleaning bucket very much at all. So a uh, ditch cleaning bucket is kind of like a, I don't want to say it's a misnomer. Maybe I'm not using that word right, but it's not for cleaning out ditches. It's for cleaning out like, or maybe not ditches as in like the trench, you know, you don't run that through to get a smooth bottom in your in your trench it's for cleaning out like waterways and swales and that kind of thing like uh you know mucking out like ponds and stuff like that because that's that's why the buckets are uh perforated around the backside so you get your muck and goop and whatever else and kind of lets the water filter out a little bit as you go uh that that's what this is for uh like cleaning up your waterways at least as far as I know, I mean, I'm sure you, if you really wanted to, you clean out the bottom of your trench with it. Certainly be good for that or, you know, fine grading or whatever. Really, any any smooth edged bucket's fabulous for fine grading, but that's what it's really for. Um, the bucket detail is really pretty good. Like I said, I'm really just happy as can be with this model. Uh, like I said, it's, it's one of the few that... Uh, I ordered as as I you know basically when I found out about it it took me about 10 seconds to like yeah I want it uh, I'm buying it you know it's 500 I think it was 550 dollars at the time I realize now that I said earlier in the video that it was like oh, 800 dollars 900 dollars on eBay well I just looked and I seen it's 2,000 uh, dollars from one of the notorious sellers on eBay so is it worth 2,000 dollars no not by any stretch of the imagination um uh, and please don't pay two thousand dollars for it. it it's not worth that much and I, i'm well aware ebay you can ask anything you 
anything you want for whatever you're selling, uh, that doesn't mean it's worth that much. So, overall, I'm really happy with this. It's it's an excellent model from CCM. Like I said, this, this was before they really started having the quality control issues. So, as far as I know, all these were pretty consistently excellent. Uh, I didn't have any problems with mine. Uh, it showed up just fine. Now, what's interesting about the 336E is that they also, Caterpillar did, uh, also offered it in a hybrid model. Now, the hybrid, uh, <laughs> I think there's a reason why Caterpillar doesn't still offer a hybrid excavator, at least as far as I know. They, 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 they work, but they're not great. Now, the, <laughs> I don't know what it is about the motor, and I don't know exactly how the hybrid works. I think, like, when you swing, it, like, it's re regenerative braking, and, like, the, the, it tracks electronically. I can't remember what it is, but you're supposed to save, uh, fuel on it. The point is, this thing sounds like it's ready to keel over and die at any moment. I, it's just something about the motor and the way it runs and the, how it sounds. Uh, it doesn't have the same motor that this does. Uh, so anyway, if I can, maybe I'll see if I can get some video. I know there's one floating around here somewhere. Anyway, so they all come with these uh, little booklets. Here you can see this was number 414 of 425. I think they made 425 of both versions, the the thumb and the coupler. And you got, you know, it basically it's the sales brochure for the machine. You got all the, you know, pertinent information, all your attachments and how much it weighs and uh, your charts and you know, all your capacity and all that fun stuff, which is really cool. I love seeing this kind of material kept with the machine or sent with the machine, the model, uh, rather. It just, it makes it much more realistic to me. And I like it. It just, uh, it floats my boat. So anyway, that's about all I got for this. Overall, it's fantastic. Uh, CCM really just nailed it with this. They had a really good run of, uh, bigger die cast models and it, it seems like that time has kind of come and gone unfortunately which uh is, is really pretty disappointing that being said so i saw the other day that caterpillar is coming on and they're, they're coming into their uh their 100 year birthday celebration and to do it up ccm is going to do a 1 16th scale uh, model of the D11 XE, I guess. That's electric drive D11. Uh, that thing is going to be gargantuan. Uh, it's been it's been quite a while. Like I, I've slowed down considerably uh, in the diecast collecting. I, I don't spend as much money and, and time as as what I used to, and that's just kind of the way life goes. But I gotta say. When I saw that they were going to do a 116 scale D11, uh, my ears perked up, and I, I, I'm real curious to see what it's going to cost. I can't imagine it being a penny less than $1,000, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's absurd. But that's going to be something that's really cool. It's going to be unique, and it's going to be an absolute monster on the shelf. And it's probably something that they're not going to do... Uh, again for a long time so it's uh I, like i said i'm really gonna have to see how much it costs it wouldn't surprise me if it's closer to like twelve hundred dollars in all honesty like the what the the d the d11 is the 124 scale which i i didn't get either of i just i wasn't uh i've never run a d11 i've never i don't think i've ever really seen a d11 to be honest so i wasn't terribly interested in getting one um you know, it, it, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's, I let it go and I let it pass and I probably shouldn't have. I don't really feel the same way about these 116 scale versions. I think they're going to be pretty cool. Uh, hopefully they get their shipping 
issues sorted out because that was a big problem with the 124 scale D11s and uh, the pricing and everything else. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. If you're thinking about getting one, let me know. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be the only person here that's kind of excited about dropping a ridiculous amount of money on a piece of metal. Anyway, so that's all I got for this. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to ask. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see, let me know. I might just have it. And I know I haven't been terribly consistent making these videos, but I've been very, very busy. So I'm trying to get them out as I can. Uh, it, like I said, if you got something you want to see, let me know. It might take me forever to get to it, but I'll get there eventually. I mean, geez, guys been asking to see this 336 for months and months and months. Uh, <laughs> but we got there eventually, and that's all that matters, right? We made it. Anyway... Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more of what I got, please consider subscribing to Maryland Construction Diecast. Thanks. Oh.